Stan Wong of Macquarie Private Wealth. Active portfolio management for private investors. Visit stanwong.com. We have Mike on the line. He's in Pickering, Ontario. Hi there, Mike. Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, David, uh, I've been reading lots of glowing reports and target prices for Suncor uh, in the Globe and Mail recently. They range from 45 to $49, but I'm concerned about things like Israel bombing Iran and things like uh, oil retreating 75% as it did so unexpectedly a few years ago. I'm just wondering, how, how would you weigh these factors and at what price would you buy Suncor, and what would your expectation for it be, mm -hmm. please? Thanks very much for your insight. Okay, Mike. So uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about this from top down. Uh, you know, the we do have exposure in uh, in the energy space. Uh, certainly, there's a there's a bunch of energy stocks that have been performing well. It it has been there's been better price performance in the companies using some of the newer technologies to unlock oil and things like the Bakken uh, and, uh, and some of the U.S. oil plays. <clears throat> the, the oil sands companies in Canada have been weaker performers over the last while. Certainly Suncor has got some tremendous assets and the company's worth a lot of money. And, and ultimately if it was a company that, that could be taken over by somebody, uh, I think that it's one that would probably go at a much higher price. The political question is uh, whether yeah. that would ever be allowed, be big, and, my, and I doubt it. Yeah, and big I doubt, ha -ha. I doubt it. <laughs> so I think that you can't, you know, have an expectation of that. Uh, certainly, there have been uh, technical difficulties in the oil sands that have caused, you know, some higher costs, uh, and uh, you know, C and Q's recently had some difficulties. Um, I, I would say, in general. If I was going to own oil right now, I would own one of the growthier companies like Crescent Point, you know, which is 90% light, light sweet crude uh, with lots of growth in it. Uh, Suncor would be a good long-term hold, I think, for an investor. But in the current market, I think it's somewhat underperforming. And uh, so if you're a long-term investor and you know, want to own a great asset, I'd be a buyer as a tactical investor today. I'm not sure this would be the right entry point for me. And overall with oil, uh, and this is difficult to speculate, but do you see some sort of conflict in the Middle East and would oil just go through the roof? Well, you know, our view is that there is a significant premium built into the current price of oil because of what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on in Iran. And arguably, uh, if there was conflict, you probably see the, the price of Brent work its way higher. We think that oil is probably in a range of $90 to $110 and is not likely to go a lot higher in the short run based on the fact that, as we talked about earlier, that extra marginal demand does not seem to be there. It seemed to have a little bit of weaker growth in Asia, a little bit weaker growth in Europe. Um, so uh, I think that there is always risk that you get an oil spike. I don't think that supply demand right now would point to the, the conditions to get that other than if you have some kind of uh, uh, armed conflict. Right. Okay, David. Here's uh, Frank. He's in uh, Montreal as we shift gears entirely. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, Dave, uh, I'd like you to comment on Avon. I just picked up Avon today, $18. Some more change there, but it seems to be every time I buy something, they slip in the reverse and never know, never know <laughs> stop. <laughs> thank you, Mark and Dave. Yeah. Thanks, Frank. Uh, Frank, uh, I would just say that if you're going to go to the consumer staples, look for one that has a little bit of a growth rate to it. Uh, Avon has had a bit of a spotty record, both on the revenue side and the earnings side in the recent, recent past. Stocks trading you know, below a declining long-term moving average. Yes, it's had a bounce since December, uh, but not, uh, not one that would point to a change in trend. So it's a laggard stock in the staples group. I do like the staples group in general. Uh, but this is, I, I don't think that you're, you're going to make a lot of money in this stock. Which this is your way. favorite staples? Well, if I had to buy one today, I'd probably buy Kraft uh, because mm -hmm. they're going to split the company into two pieces uh, uh, over the next period of time. You're going to see a, a ramp up in the dividend growth. Uh, they've got great assets. You're going to get one value for the international business and one value for the, for the domestic business. And, uh, and we think that you can see both rising share price and a rising dividend. I think that makes a good case in this market. Which is the more appealing business, the international one? I think probably the international mm -hmm. business will give you the better growth rate, uh, but, the, but the domestic business will give you a great defendable cash flow. 
So right. it's a good combination between the two, but you're likely to unlock value when you spin one piece away from the other. Right. Okay, David, uh, Tony's in Burlington. He's got an email on CSX. Could Mr. Burroughs comment on the outlook for this uh, company for uh, this year and for next? Okay. Now I really do think somebody has our, <laughs> has our oh, list. Oh, yes. Um, so another, another short we're actually, uh, stock, we're actually short. Be careful with some of these rails because many of them get a lot of their revenue from coal. In the case of CSX, uh, close to 30 percent, 31, 32 percent of the revenue comes, comes from coal. And if you listen to what the coal companies have to say, the thermal coal companies are having a hard time competing with natural gas. So there's a lot of power producers switching over from coal to low price natural gas, which means coal volumes shipped are going down and that's problematic for the rails. So CSX is one of those companies. And so if you look at the way it's, it's performing and many of the other rails, really anything other than CP, which has the prospect of some restructuring, right. uh, it's a group that's underperforming. And this is actually one of the reasons we have some concern about the durability of this equity rally, because the transports and certainly the rails have been underperforming quite dramatically. And coal stocks have just been getting creamed. The Arches, the Patriots, and so on. Yes, they have. Just getting hammered. Here's uh, Noreen in uh, Pontypool, Ontario. Hi there, Noreen. Yes. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi. I'd like to know what your aspects are about the outlook for Barrick. It just seems to be bouncing up and down lately. Yeah. I'll hang up and listen to what you have to say. Thank you. Yeah, so Noreen, you know, again, we've had a very good rally, and these golds haven't been able to, uh, haven't been able to, uh, to catch a bid. So I think that uh, when you get a market that rallies 20 or 25 percent and a sector doesn't participate, it tells you that if things are to weaken, you can, you can get hurt a little bit. And certainly the golds have been hurt a little over the last couple of days. So, you know, if you really want to own a gold stock, I would say Yamana probably looks the best of the bunch. Uh, but aside from that, I, I would avoid the golds. As you mentioned earlier, you're not holding any gold stocks right now. No. A short break here once again here with David Burroughs. We'll come right back and he'll continue to answer your questions on North American large caps.